thumbs up when you're ready. I'm Thomas Powell. This is Resurrection Sunday, April 4, 2010. You know, I was just here talking to my son Warren and my friend Johnny just relating to my life. You know, it's the 26th anniversary of me meeting God, I believe. You know, um, I had went to Ole Miss and I was um, in the military, OCS Academy. Had been in there for like 14 months. You know, and um, I had a protest at Ole Miss and um, bringing the rebel flag down and the mascots. And the Klan was bad at me. All my officers were lawyers from Ole Miss and officers. So, you know, uh, they got upset with me. And they sent me to Camp McCain in Grenada, Mississippi. And they set me up with the 213th um, Engineering Battalion. And they were all redneck Klansmen. And they took me out in the woods. Tried to run me over with bulldozers, tried to kill me, and I escaped by the grace of God because God warned me and I was able to duck the trees and the bulldozers. And I got down on the road where they couldn't run me over, you know. But at that time, I realized that my life was in danger, you know, from the secret society. I guess it was a white supremacist organization. So, anyhow, when I got back to Jackson, my dad had a tree farm. It was, it was Resurrection Sunday, 1984. April. And so I went to Pinola, I guess that's Mendenhall, Mississippi. And I went in the woods. I hadn't ate for seven days, you know. I drank juice, maybe ate some bananas. You know. And I went in the woods and I was praying to God and I wanted God to tell me whether or not I was going to survive what was happening to me. Because I had lost everything. I lost my scholarship. I was out of law school. Wasn't I mean, I was just, life was just going bad. And I went in the woods and just had peace and tranquility. And I started spinning in a circle, just like the axis of the earth. And then lightning started coming out the sky. And it was right on top of me where it should have burnt me and hit me, but it didn't. And I kept on spinning and lightning coming and coming. And then I stopped spinning, but the lightning kept flashing at me. You know, and I'm like, man, this lightning didn't hit me, but at the same time, I was scared because the lightning was flashing at me. And I'm like, I know this lightning is going to hit me and kill me. But then I said, if I really have faith in God and believe, I'm not showing any fear. So I stood there, the lightning flashing around me, and I fell to my knees. I had a knife in my hand because I wanted to seek revenge against the people trying to kill me. And I dropped it, you know, because I didn't want the lightning to hit me. And I kept flashing, it kept flashing. I bowed my head, I laid on my knees. I felt like I was in the presence of God. So as I sat there for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, the lightning wouldn't stop. So I got up, I packed my gear, lightning still flashing at me, flashing, flashing. And as I packed all my rucksack on and all my military gear, the lightning still following me, flashing, just following me. And I'm like, man, what did I do? You know, what have I unleashed? And all of a sudden, the sky just opened up and it became a torrential rain. The lightning flashed and the storm. Man, it took me 12 hours to get out those woods because I was lost. I was deep in the woods. Special Forces soldiers in there looking for me. I don't know if they were going to kill me or what. You know, they were looking for me. But it took me 12 hours to get out those woods. And I found a stable in the middle of nowhere. It was an old abandoned house. I called a stable. It was abandoned. It was a little wood house. I got out the rain. I was able to dry off. You know, I stayed there three or four hours just to rest. And then I found my way to the highway and escaped. Thomas Powell again. This is my son Warren, Joseph Powell. You know, I told you about the lightning bolt coming out the air. He was a witness to it, and he was there that day, and I just want him to tell you the story. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm taking my shades off right now, and you can look in my face, because I'm telling you the truth, and I have nothing to hide about anything I'm going to tell you about my story. It may be fantastic, it may be unbelievable, but it's the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Go ahead, Warren. All right, well, we was leaving daycare. It was about 4.30, cause we had just got in from recess. We, I was walking down the steps from Afterwoods Baptist Church, and I had just got in the car, and I was taking off my, uh, my shoes, and I put them in the side, on the side of the van, and Dad, Dad was about to close the door, and it, it was clear skies, there wasn't no clouds or nothing, and it, 
the lightning bolt just came down all of a sudden right on top of daddy and by the time he jumped it, it was already gone so he jumped in the car and he thought it was right beside him but it wasn't it was right on top of his head I mean directly on top of his head and it was gone by the time he had jumped in the car and that's it So again, I'm going to tell you my life story, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And I'm going to have documentation next time about what happened at Ole Miss with the rebel flag. I'm signing off now. You know, I was student, um, I was president of what we call the Black American Law Student Association at that time, called BALSA. And at that time, you know, I was um, at the University of Mississippi in law school. And, you know, I had just been elected president. And in 1983, the yearbook had the Klan all through the yearbook. And they had it marching over little black kids' heads. And I told them, if I'm president, I was going to burn that yearbook because I didn't appreciate all the references that they had in that book and how it made it feel like, you know, that the Klan was just marching over black people's heads. And I told them, if I'm president, I'm going to burn the book. And I was just elected, you know. I wasn't even paying attention to Ole Miss. They elected me president. Then all the black students had a, a meeting, and I went to this meeting, and my picture ended up in the newspaper the next day. Angry blacks protest rebel flag and mascot at Ole Miss. And that was the beginning of a nightmare that has haunted me my whole life. You know, my picture in the newspaper. My law professors angry at me. All my military officers and OCS are all lawyers from Ole Miss. And like I said, it was a nightmare. And then that's when I lost my commission. And I ended up going in the woods and they tried to kill me. And then I was just on the run for my life until I joined the Army in about 1987 and I was able to leave Mississippi and regroup. And then I came back after I graduated from law school. But I had documentation of my picture in the paper and the yearbook from 1983 at the University of Mississippi. If you don't believe me, you can pull it yourself. You go get the yearbook from 1983 from the University of Mississippi and you will see what I'm talking about. And you can find the newspaper articles about April 21st, 1984, thereabout. My picture is front headline newspaper. Angry blacks protest rebel flag and colonel rebel mascot. So I'll be able to prove anything that I tell you on this film. There's documentation. I can prove anything that I say to you. It's all in writing and documented. So I'll be seeing y'all. Thank you. Do I need to move now? This is Thomas Powell again. This is part one of a series of stories that we will be posting every week telling you my life history and the story of my life. So stay tuned, and there's going to be a series every week until this entire story is told to the world.